Hello everyone and welcome back to DCM, Doritos Connections and Mountain Dew, your favorite local video game show. I am your host, Howard. I'm your co-host, David. And before we do anything, let's kick off officially DCM Season 2. Woo! Hey, Season 2? Yeah, Season 2! Hey. Season 2, baby! It, it's exactly the same. It's exactly I, the same. I moved the Monopoly board. See, it's here now. It's this. It, it's different. It's, it's, it's exactly the same. I, D Dave, it's different. I swear. Okay, the Monopoly board's over there. We have the Holy Grail. What else is different? We got production value, baby. That's right. We have more than one camera. Switch to that one. We oh. got more than one camera, baby. Multi-camera setup. Back to the wide shot. And I got a director in there. We have production value. We're a big time show now. Woo, season two. Let's go. <clears throat> Told you. <laughs> so let's start off with our first topic of the day. Woo, topic. My first topic, I'm gonna just come out right out and say the Square Enix sold all their Western studios to invest in NFTs. What a bunch of idiots. <laughs> what a bunch oh of Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who don't know, Square Enix, they are ma mainly known for Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, Kingdom Hearts. Well, I think Disney mainly produces Kingdom Hearts, mm. but still. Um, so they sold all their Western studios to Embracer Group for I think 300 mil. If you don't know what Embracer Group is, they're the parent company of THQ Nordic and a few other game studios. Um, they sold uh, three studios that include Crystal Dynamics, uh, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal, uh, which means they also include the IPs, meaning they sold Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, uh, Legacy of Kane, Thief, and Gex. Pour one out for Gex. Rest in peace. So, so why, why did they sell it? Okay. Well, first of all, they want to invest in blockchain technology and NFT. Right when the, <laughs> right when the blockchain market is just crashing. By the Bitcoin way, Bitcoin is crashing. Blockchain currencies are crashing. NFTs are at an all-time low. So you picked the worst possible time. To commit to this A idea. bunch of people are doing that too, by the way. Like, there's, they're, they're making Mr. Bean NFTs now. <laughs> Mr. Bean Mr. NFTs? Mr. Bean NFTs? Y'all ever wanted a Mr. Bean NFT? <laughs> I know you did. So now here's your chance, right when it's worthless. <laughs> we got your piping hot Mr. Bean <laughs> NFTs right here. Right here, baby. Because <laughs> you know when I want to own a JPEG, it's a picture oh, of Mr. Mr. Bean. Bean. Oh, God. So, so what does this mean? Okay, <laughs> so that's the first thing. The second thing is that Square Enix put way too much money into basically every game. There's been a meme for essentially the past decade where every single game that's made by a Western studio, they put so much money into it, they're always, the sales are always disappointing. Even though they hit millions of sales. I don't know what sales figures, but all three of the Tomb Raider reboots, Sleeping Dogs, the Thief reboot, Deus Ex, like these are all, in Square Enix's eyes, financial disasters. Issue, they have all sold millions of copies. Millions, they've sold millions of copies. So they are pumping, they must be pumping so much money into like all these games in order for like, 1.5 mil mm -hmm. to be like a disaster. But don't worry, Square Enix kept three IPs. Three. Outriders, Life is Strange, and uh, what, what, Just Cause. Like I said to you before we got on set and we got on camera, I could see uh, life is strange and, and, and just cause. But who on earth played Outriders? I certainly didn't. The few people who I know did, they did not like it one bit. <laughs> yeah, also, uh, we're going to point out that um, <clears throat> Outriders was not profitable no. at all in 2021, and apparently um, 
I think the studio no no flying hogs. They have not received any royalties from the game, which to me seems just a, just a little bit illegal. I don't know much about that about that, that kind of those laws, but I just just seems just, just a little, little illegal to me. So like, th this is by far one of the <clears throat> worst business decisions I've ever seen in like in my life. Like, in my, like, they sold Tomb Raider. They sold Tomb Raider, the most well-known female protagonist in video game history, for NFTs. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense at all. That's like if Capcom's like, what if I just sold Street Fighter so I can invest more in Bitcoin? What? Are you high? So long, Ryu. <laughs> Have a nice life. Well, we're gonna get some Ethere Ethereum <laughs> Ryu tokens. <laughs> Ethereum Ryu tokens and some Chun-Li coins. Oh my god. The, the worst part is people would absolutely buy Chun-Li coin. Okay, but we know why they would buy Chun-Li We know why, kid. but, they abso but the, the fact we, is that yeah, they absolutely we, would. We, we, know, we know. We know. We know. You know. I agree with that. Everyone them. knows. We know the Chun-Li coin. Yeah. I personally, you know, there's also probably the Cami coin. Yeah, yeah. And, um, different strokes for different folks, you know. Yeah, you know, you gotta, you gotta cover all the fan bases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all feel me? Y'all feel me? Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> now we have to think about. First of all, NFTs. Let's get this also out of the way. <laughs> NFTs in video games. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but these game studios are having the 5,000 IQ move of putting them in video games. All right, and and. Look, I know we need a few examples before we can clearly make any deducive statements, you know, like nerds would say. But uh, we actually have a good one. Uh, the last Ghost Recon game had NFTs, and guess what? It sucked. It wasted so much electricity mm -hmm. for, like, less than 12 dudes buying NFTs of their gun skins. And, like, they only got a couple thousand dollars. Ubisoft got a couple thousand dollars. You know what the only thing... The, 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 the only successful um, I I introduction of NFTs into a game was what I think what? is when they put it, when they tried, tried is key word here, tried to put it in Stalker 2 and everyone bullied the developers out of it. And they were like, okay, never mind, we're good. We won't do it. Sorry about that. And, and in fact, in fact, double whammy, we're going to also delay the game. Yes. Because I'm going to put money down. They actually wasted a bunch of time encoding the NFT stuff in. Oh, absolutely they did. And I mean, you, you guys know, you, the viewers know, we here on DCM, we love to bully companies. Oh, oh yeah, you can't stop me you, unless I get a lot of hush money, <laughs> <laughs> which we probably won't. We have, we will. But well, if you want to give us money, like, you know, feel free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all got, got cash apps? No. Y'all got cash Yeah. App? Venmo. We'll start a Patreon. Yeah. We'll start an OnlyFans. What are we gonna put on OnlyFans? Obviously our show. Let's play videos exclusive to OnlyFans coming soon. <gasps> Woo! <laughs> so. So th we, we know for a fact that NFTs in video games aren't worth it. So, oh my God, if they make like a Dragon Quest game or oh a Final God. Fantasy game oh God. or the next Kingdom of Hearts has NFTs. I, I don't think that will fly. I, th I think if, if they try to put NFTs in Kingdom Hearts especially, oh. fans will Riot. It'll be a literal end game. <laughs> <laughs> it probably would. You're right. Yeah, I don't I don't think fan, like Stalker I feel is more of a it's it's not like a super niche thing. Yeah. But it's it's more niche than anything Square Enix does, I feel. Um so I I think if like if a bigger studio like Square Enix were to like they tried to like really push that. That's not going to end well. That is I mean, not going to end well. But we have to, again, realize, right, like Square Enix <laughs> is like the king of stupid decisions. This is true. Right? And if Ubisoft looked the angry mob in the face and went, no, in fact, I want NFTs in every Ghost Recon game because I hate you. Right? Like, they, they doubled down. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, what are, what are the chances of Square Enix just like being like, yeah, you know what? You're American and I'm Japanese, so I don't care about your opinion. <laughs> Western <laughs> audience, I don't care. Like, they, I, 
there, there's always that fear. Yeah. You know? um, and, and I guess for the last point is we, we got to talk. What, what, what do you hope happens with all these IPs now that the parent company of THQ, Nordic, has them? I, I mean... I'm thinking best case scenario is that we do get re-releases of some of these old games. I would say so, because I mean, I don't think there's any way, except like on PC, I assume, I don't think there's any way to like play any of the older Tomb Raider games. Yeah, the, like the older Tomb Raider games, Gex, Legacy of Kane, they're all only on PC. Yeah. Which people need to learn how great of a character Laura Croft was and how much she was essentially in the first four to five games, a utter psychopath. And I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. It's like, like you know, the new Tomb Raider games, and she, she's like, oh, I'm sad, I don't want to kill someone. Yeah. And then, you know, the writer's like, oh, I wanted to make her a lesbian. Like, no, 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 I want her to find the last living dinosaur and then put bullets in its head. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I, I only, I've only played the first of the, of the new Tomb Raider trilogy. I liked it. I know that the that um, Rise of the Tomb Raider is supposed to be like way better than that first one. Yeah. But we're 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 starting to kind of you know we're, we're going through the motions at this point. We, yeah. we need to we need to go back to basics. G give it give us give me some 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 cheesy schlocky Tomb Raider. Give me Psycho Laura. Yes, exactly. <laughs> give me Psycho Laura back. I want her. To walk up to the last living woolly mammoth, go, I'm an archaeologist, and then whip out an AK <laughs> and gun it down. <laughs> Just like the classic Tomb Raider games. Yeah. Um, new Gex game. New gotta, Ge gotta, get, gotta have that. Oh my god, imagine if the first thing they do, like, Embracer does is make Gex 4. Oh my god. That'd be the oh funniest god. thing. That everyone's would be the comeback like, of a lifetime. Everyone's like, Oh my God! They're gonna they're gonna make a new Tomb Raider. They're gonna make a new Tomb Raider, and they walk up on the stage of E3 and went, Haha. "No, <laughs> first thing they, they, they take the mic, screw Tomb Raider, Gex Four drops the mic, and then they pick it up. Also, Gex HD collection coming soon <laughs> drops it. There we go. Perfect. That 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 be the E3 conference of the year. <laughs> E3 conference. And also, let's not forget Deus Ex. So, like, also we could hope for maybe Deus Ex ports. I would love a Deus Ex port. I've never played any Deus Ex game. I've only played Human Revelations when that came out, mm -hmm. which was very fun. I did enjoy it, but I also want to play some of the older ones. Yeah. I've had Mankind Divided for like three dollars in the season yeah. pass. I know cheap, the original is like consistently it. on sale on PC for like a dollar fifty. So like I could play it whenever. <laughs> so you know, that's uh, that's um, you know we, we can only hope for the best. Yeah, I looked at the studio list for Embracer. They seem like a a decent yeah. studio. They don't seem as as much of idiots as Square Enix is. Uh, as they sit on their Scrooge McDuck pile of McMillions from releasing Final Fantasy VII for the 18th time. Um, glad that joke went through. Yep, I heard me. that as well. So uh, Thank you, Director. <laughs> thanks, Mr. Director. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're, we're going to have to wait and see. Um, I, I just... <laughs> this story is just too stupid not to really go, go with I, I'm... <laughs> And this this is not the first time we've made fun of NFTs in the show, right? It can't oh, be. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, wait. I've made fun of NFTs on my other show, Talking Toku, and, and so the lines kind of blur uh, where, where I have made fun of NFTs. In the yeah, past. yeah, watching on the hit podcast, Talking Toku, available on all podcasting platforms. I'm pretty sure just Spotify. <laughs> Fine, just only on Spotify. <laughs> Check it out. Working on it. Working on it. But um, I actually, I think we might have made fun of it in like one of the news segments, but I don't think we ever had a full segment on it. No, no. Aww. This is the first time we, we've really doubled down on our hate for NFTs. Good. Keep it that way. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure there'll be more. Don't worry. And now with our first topic done, let's get through some mini reviews. Whoa. <laughs> So, I have been playing hit new indie game, Dawn of the Monsters. It is a game I've been looking forward to for 
three years? Is that the math? I believe so. Because I was there, present in the audience, when Dawn of the Monsters was first revealed to the public at G-Fest 2019. Um, Dawn of the Monsters is a side-scroller beat-em-up in which you play as one of four characters. The Kaiju Megadon, the Kaiju Ganera, uh, Ultra <laughs> Ultraman Stand-In, um, Aegis Prime, I had to think about that one for a second, and then uh, Mech Stand-In, oh god, what's that one's name? I'm not gonna remember it. <laughs> There's a Mech Stand-In that I don't remember the name. But anyways, side-scroller beat him up, you're playing as a kaiju, you're beating up other kaiju, it's a grand old time. I will, I will, I'll, I'll say it right now, I'm not good enough at beat em ups to like perform fancy combos. I'm, I know there are people out there who can do like, tr you know, triple digit combos. That, that ain't me, that ain't me. I'm sorry, I'm just not good. Despite hosting a video game talk show, I'm not good enough at video games for that, sorry. Um, but I will say, it is a ton of fun. The story, it's, I mean, it's, it's not great. It's, it's, it's kind of goofy, kind of, you know, tropey, but I think that's the point. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I mean, it's, it's very clearly a love letter to giant monsters and giant monster media. You know, you look at the skins for all the various characters. Basically, every single one is a reference to something else. Like I saw actually on Twitter earlier today, um, one of the art directors for the game like posted an article about which of the skins were his favorites. And they were, there's a skin based on Wolverine from X-Men. Uh, the Giver, Toei's Spider-Man, um, Them, the, the, the 1954 giant ant film. It's, it's great. I love it. There's so many references. There's, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, it, it, the, the music's great. The art, I, the art style was the thing when I first saw this um, kind of revealed to the public. The art style was what really got me. It's, it's kind of like a Mike Mignola Hellboy-ish but a little more cartoony, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't. There's probably, there's probably a way better way to describe that art style. But uh, Dawn of the Monsters is a ton of fun. It is available on, I believe, Xbox and PlayStation consoles and PC. And I would probably give it an 8 out of 10. We're going to keep the indie train going because I've been playing Snakey Bus. Yes, that is a real title for a real video game. <laughs> Uh, what happens uh, when you get Crazy Taxi uh, and Snake? You know, Snake on, on like your Nokia phone, you get Snakey Bus, an arcade game developed by Stovetop Studios, where essentially you're a bus picking up passengers, and the more passengers you pick up, the longer the bus gets. And I only played this game for the Easy Platinum, because it takes like an hour to get everything. Uh, I didn't... Usually with those types of games, they're not fun, they're terrible. But oh my goodness, this game was so fun. I was addicted. I played this game, I sat down and I played it for like a whole night. It is fun, right? There's so many maps to choose from and a lot of game modes, especially for something as cheap as $10. Very cheap. Uh, it has, you know, cities such as Seattle, Paris, Miami, which Miami has like an 80s synthwave aesthetic to it. So like they have like a little filter on it. And uh, they also have like, you know, uh, a, like a dorm room. And they have like a lot of abstract ones. Like there's literally one that is like a planet with like rings going around it. And you get a jump. You can jump. And all the buses follow the jump where you go. So you can have insane, like, you know, you jumping all over the place while also not trying to fall off or hitting yourself just like in Snake. Um, it really, it, it, it's that arcadey fun where the, you know you see the numbers go up of how long you know your bus is, and you know my, my monkey brain's like, ah yes, the bigger number equal good, make me happy, you know. So just just me running around a map with like a, a, a 400 foot long bus sprawling all over a random suburb, very satisfying until I hit myself and I blow up. <laughs> but in that, those few moments where I go, hey, look, 
That's the, that's the end of the snake. It's glorious. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, it is available on Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and I think I'm going to give this a, a, a 7 out of 10. Good game. Fun game. Buy it. All right, all right, all right. Last topic for the day. Dave, hit me up. What's going on? What's popping? Whoever thought that in the year of our Lord, 2022, 11 years after the game came out, we'd still be talking about Duke Nukem Forever. <gasps> oh my God, my favorite game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I so didn't you hear about this. Uh, so in, apparently an early build, an early demo build of the 2001 version of Duke Nukem Forever recently leaked online. Apparently it was a, they were, it was from 4chan. F phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal place that 4chan is. Um, that can be very big air quotes around that, please. Don't, don't make them mad, we have a small channel. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so they, they were, they, they said they had it and they said they were gonna make it released to the public in June. But apparently they was, that was a haha -ha funny and they released it the next day. So now there is a playable, but very, very, very unfinished version of the 2001 build of Duke Nukem Forever out there. Um, oh, oh, we also have to uh, mention, um, we said Duke Nukem 11, I'm sorry, Duke Nukem Forever came out 11 years ago. This game took like 15 years to make. Yeah. It, so, so this is why this is kind of important, that yeah, this yeah. is the 2001 build of a game that came out in 2011. Mm -hmm. So, and the, the, the really interesting part is that it sparked a bit of a controversy. Um, so Apogee founder Scott, from Apogee's founder, uh, uh, Scott Miller and George Broussard. So Miller was kind of supportive of, of the league. Like he seemed to be happy that it was out there. Um, and he, he made this blog post on the Apogee website uh, claiming that uh, lack of staff, no decent development roadmap, and you know the the fact that new tech kept coming out was causing delays to the game because they had to you know catch up, um, and that ultimately led to that version of the games being canceled, and then ultimately 3D Realms and Apogee going under. Um, George Broussard, on the other hand, had a, a couple different things to say about that. Uh -oh. um, he he clapped back, claiming it was Miller's actions which caused the company's bankruptcy. I quote, Scott's a clueless narcissist whose actions are what led to the gearbox suits slash friction that led to us losing 3DR and the Duke IP. Whoa! Mind blowing, <laughs> mind blowing the nonsense he spews. Oh, geez. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a, little, a little rough. It's a little rough, yeah. I, th I, th I think we're missing some drama here. I think so. I mean, the, the what happened to 3D Realms and Apogee is a huge mess. I mean, we'll probably never know, like, every detail of what happened with that and what, ha and what happened with Duke Nukem Forever. Um, but it's interesting that this that this has come out. I don't know where it came from. It did, we don't know, it's, cause it's, it's 4chan, it's, it's all anonymous. We don't know where the leak came from, but it's out there. Most people seem to be happy that it's out there. Um, from what I've seen, the, the couple clips I've seen from the leak, it looks, it looks fun. People seem to be enjoying it for yeah. as broken and unfinished as it is. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's. I guess it's that many people are just starved for decent Duke Nukem content, considering it's been like 20 years yeah. since anything good happened. I to mean, it. that that was what Miller's thoughts on it were. Like he was, he hoped that now that this is out in the public's hands, like maybe this will lead to like a new Duke Nukem game. I don't know if that will be the case. Um, I mean, maybe maybe it's it's a thing like um, with the Deadpool teaser that that proof of concept trailer that Ryan Reynolds himself may or may not have leaked, <laughs> because as well, from what I understand, that got leaked and like Fox basically immediately greenlit the movie based on the reactions to that teaser. Yeah. Um, so if we get a new Duke Nukem game out of this, I think that would be great. But I can easily see that not happening as well. Yeah, because because we have to remember. Duke Nukem is owned by Gearbox still. Mm -hmm. Gearbox is full of insane raving lunatics yes. who want just more money for drugs. Exactly. 
and other things I can't say on TV. So what they do is they con studios and then just make Borderlands. <laughs> and right now they're focusing on, now, now, now big shocker, Borderlands, a movie, and Tiny Tina's Dungeon Adventure thing? Borderlands spinoff. Borderlands spinoff, which apparently has god-awful DLC. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently oh, their DLC's yikes. horrendous. Yikes, yikes, yikes. So, I highly doubt we're gonna, if, and if we are gonna get anything Duke Nukem, it's probably gonna be garbage like Duke Nukem Forever was. Mm -hmm. Just a bland, generic, clunky shooter. If it were anyone other than Gearbox, I think we'd be okay. Oh yeah, no, they would absolutely, if this was, literally if this was like, I don't know, who, what's the worst studio I can think of? Ubisoft, if this was mm -hmm. Ubisoft, they would immediately green light again. Yeah, absolutely. This I mean, EA, 3D they, Realms is, is, is they're back now. Yeah, you know, they, they have uh, Ion Fury, which people really like. Um, I, do, I don't see them getting the IP back, but it would be nice for them for them to get the IP back. Gearbox would so keep on to that IP specifically so no one could have yeah. it. And I see, I've seen so many people online saying like, oh, Duke Nukem could only work in, in current year if it was a parody. And it's like, no, no, it couldn't. No. It, could, it could work, he could work just as well as he did back then, not as a parody. Because if you go yeah. too far into parody with a character like Duke Nukem, people will hate it. Also, I do, uh, I am just saying, if we gave Duke Nukem the same personality as, uh, as when everyone was doing the, the Duke Nukem voiceovers, I actually would be kind of okay with that. I'd be okay with that. Like, go home, get sleep, young man. <laughs> like, da -da -da -da. like, I would, I would. What do you mean you lost the baby? <laughs> go find it. <laughs> like the oblivious idiot who's still cool. I think that could work. Yeah, no, it's no, it, it's hilarious. We, we can, we, you you can do things with them, but uh, I I always hate that argument of old characters don't work now. It's, you can like just make one tiny edit and yeah. it's still refreshing. Like I, it, it, that's a like, silly. Yes, we, we we understand that in 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 the current climate. Duke Nukem is probably a very problematic character. <laughs> However, camera on me, if he does the same exact thing to men, he's probably okay. <laughs> and it'd be even funnier. <laughs> and it'd be even funnier. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I'm just throwing that idea out there, Gearbox. You know, I'm just saying Duke Nukem. Listen, Duke Randy, we know you watch the show. <laughs> okay, we we know you, you, you do things like that. Give us a call. <laughs> Give, you know, just... Well, I, just pay me like royalties of like point just, zero just zero give zero DC zero one the, cent. The Duke Nukem IP, and we'll take it from here. Wait, hold on. We definitely, we definitely, totally know how to make a game. Yes, we do. So that's the end of the show. <laughs> 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 Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, uh, say hi to us down uh, on the street. Give us your old video games you don't want anymore. Give us all your video game IPs. Give us your video game IPs. Give us the copyrights to literally everything you own that involves yep. video games. Yep. And make sure you buy Dave a copy of Mortal Kombat, to, uh, the movie, the live action one, the new one. Uh, and ship it to his house <laughs> and then ship me the dead or alive movie to my house. Deal? <laughs> Wonderful. Good night, everyone. What just happened? Good night. <laughs>